getting ready to start the Highline Trail. I got some buddies with me for the first few miles. I don't know where Rocky went, but yeah, it's supposed to be a pretty stormy, rainy few days on trail. So we'll see how successful I am. I am officially solo on the Highline Trail. Austin and Rocky joined me for the first four and a little bit miles. Um, and now they're heading back to the car. And so I will not get to see them if all goes well until about mile 75 or 80 at Luddy Peak Trailhead. It has been good weather so far. Got some sun, haven't had any rain yet. Probably we'll see some thunderstorms at some point soon, but that's all right. We'll uh, just play it safe. A little nervous, a little scared. When they left, I had a few tears, um, just cause I've never done something like this alone. We'll see how the rest of today goes and hope that all is safe, all is smooth and that the weather doesn't have to impact my travel times. So a few fun facts about my trip. I'm on the Highline Trail. It is approximately 101 miles. Um, it runs east to west or west to east, depending on which way you're starting. The bailout points that I have in the first half of this trail would still require a 15 mile hike out. The weather is expected to be pretty uh, tumultuous. Uh, it is predicting pretty significant thunderstorms throughout the days and the evenings and the nights for the next six days with pretty heavy rain. It's supposed to be pretty cold. Most of the trail is above 10,000 feet elevation. So that are, that's kind of some basic overview of the trail, um, the time that I'm thinking. And I just fell. <laughs> that was, I at least got that out of the way. Other information, that's good to know. Tons of water access for the vast, vast majority of this trail. Towards the east end of the trail, there is an area that is a 15 mile stretch that could be without water. About to head up my first pass, Rocky Sea Pass. Should be my only pass of the day, day one. So I am about nine miles in on the other side of Rocky Sea Pass um, and below tree line, which is good because 
there's some pretty little scary looking clouds over there. Um, and I'm trying to push because I worry that these storms are really gonna start to come in in the next couple of hours. And then I probably won't want to be out there, especially if they turn into thunderstorms. All right, so right now I am huddled up in my tent. Uh, an hour ago, um, I started to hear some thunder and a few raindrops started to fall. So I put my raincoat on, put my poncho on, and I had only heard like one little roll of thunder. I'm like, okay, well, I'm just gonna keep moving forward. There's plenty of trees around that I can duck into. Um, and then the thunder started to roll a lot more. And so I tucked in to a little grove of trees um, and put my poncho over myself in my bag. I saw a huge thing of lightning. Um, so I, I started to get pretty scared. <laughs> the thunder and lightning were pretty intense. Um, it was, you know, the lightning to thunder timing was only a few seconds. So I was definitely right in the middle of a storm. Uh, my plan has now changed a bit. I'm gonna try and go about two miles further east um, there's a trail intersection around there and I'm just worried about having to do this every day, all day. I could bail out on a 13 mile trail, um, to be picked up by Austin tomorrow sometime. It's been a really great experience if I can kind of think outside of my emotional feelings right now of being scared. It's forcing me to go into that uncomfortable zone and find out that I'm gonna be okay or what do I need to do to be okay or to feel okay or to be the safest that I can be in the situation. And I knew going into this that this was a huge, a huge chance that this is gonna happen, that there were gonna be thunderstorms. It's about 5 p.m. I'm not worried about the time of day. I can definitely make it two miles. It's just making sure that uh, when I do break down and I'm ready to move forward, that I'm doing it in the safest window that I can. You know, this is the first week all summer that there have been any storms in the forecast. <laughs> I mean, high Alpine, there's, there's always storms, right? There's always thunderstorms that pop up here and there. They've been forecasting that literally for the next six days that there was gonna be heavy thunderstorms and he heavy rain. Um, pretty much all day. They've even referred to the rains as being monsoon rains. And I kind of knew that it would be a pretty low chance of me being able to safely finish it. I kind of was trying to put on a bit of a bravado and convince myself that I can get out there. It will be okay. It will be safe. I will be fine. I sent a couple of messages to Austin on the Garmin. Um, the first one was to just say that I had stopped because there was thunder and lightning and I was nestled away in some trees. And of course he's like, do you need to come back? Yeah, and uh, unfortunately that's not an option right now because I am nine miles in. So it'd be a pretty hefty hike to do before night would be over. Sorry, I thought I heard something. And then the other thing is I would have to go back over Rocky Sea Pass. And uh, I, that's definitely not a safe choice right now. I'm gonna pop out of my tent. It's not raining anymore. I can see sunlight all around um, and it's bright all around me so that makes me feel that the clouds have kind of dissipated. The darker clouds are kind of gone um, and see if I can hoof it a couple of miles um, eastbound and, and get to that um, trail junction. As long as I can find a flat area that's amongst like a little group of trees so I can just kind of be safe from a, a lightning and wind standpoint. That's kind of my biggest goal for right now. I'm not getting the mileage I wanted today and that's okay. You know, we have to accept the things that we don't have control over. I don't have control over the weather. I don't have control that a bad thunderstorm and lightning storm came over um, and that I needed to seek shelter to be safe. What I can control is being safe, staying warm, staying dry um, and making the best choices that I can and setting myself up to make the best choices. So here's the remnants of some of the hail from that storm.
night. So weather has been good. Um, bluish skies with clouds, no rain, no thunder. The creeks are really, really flowing. Um, so I gotta figure out what's the safest way across. I think I'm gonna try and go upstream. If this is where two streams come together. So I bet there's some places for me to cross just a little bit upstream. I'm gonna go do a little bushwhack situation here and see what I can come up with. All right, so I forded the river up above where it meets, cross that little one and then cross the little one that's over here. Couldn't really find any good rocks to cross on, so ended up having to kind of stretch through the water. All right, time for me to figure out where the trails go. If I were a betting woman, I bet this was the sign for the intersection. Um, I don't know if that's going to be Rock Creek or if this is Highline or what, so I'm going to get my map out. Yeah, so this is the intersection for Rock Creek and the Highline Trail. I don't have a whole lot of trees around me. A few dead ones back there. I might be able to kind of meander to. Um, not super great campground because of the fire. So I think I am going to go a little bit further on the Highline Trail and see if a little bit of greenery pops through or if there's a little patch of trees. About one in the morning, and uh, it's starting to blow through thunder and lightning. A lot of wind up higher. Sounds like maybe a little bit of hail too. There's been some on and off lightning throughout the night. Um, I didn't really hear much thunder until the last 30 minutes. And then the rain and the wind were new as well. Just hanging out and waiting for morning to come. Yeah, waiting for the storm to blow over. Good morning. It is about 7 o'clock and I am starting down to the Rock Creek Trail um, to go to the trailhead to finish out this adventure. Um, I wanted to show you where I was. This is some of that burn section I talked about. It's just miles and miles of burn section. And it just gets everything black and sooty and charcoal-y, uh, including the water. Um, storm lasted for about an hour and a half to two hours. Um, and then it died off and I was able to sleep for about an hour. So the majority of the trail has been, kind of what I've been showing you is a lot of blowdowns from damaged trees, um, from fires like here, this reroute I'm having to do. So it's just slow and methodical and you can't really get into a great rhythm. Just heard from Austin, he is on his way to meet me at the trailhead. It's a beautiful morning pretty 
cool. Just enjoying my time on the trail. I'm probably somewhere around, uh, I don't know, five miles from the trailhead. Maybe four and a half if I'm lucky. Weather is starting to build around me. There are dark gray clouds that are just kind of building in every which direction. Kind of uh, northeast of me, south of me, west of me. I'm just pretty nervous about the weather and I don't want to regret stopping for a few minutes to press my shoulders and then have weather come in that I could have avoided. The blowdowns have ceased for now, thank goodness. It's been a lot faster pace over the last few miles than uh, the first few. I should be getting within a couple of miles of where I might see Austin and Rocky if they're able to get here in time to hike up and the weather's not bad down where they are 